When we talk about self-harm, most people's first thought is skin covered in scars and bruises. Are you one of those people? Hopefully, you'll get a broader picture after watching this video. Self-harming behavior is any behavior where a person purposefully inflicts harm on themselves. It doesn't always leave visible scars. Sometimes it's easier to hide, because on the outside it's invisible, but that doesn't make it less dangerous. And that's why we must talk about this problem and bring the invisible to light. Here are five forms and dangers of invisible self-harm. Number one, an empty stomach. Taking care of yourself and the body you live in means nurturing it with nutritional, healthy food. But denying your body the fuel it needs to function equals self-destructive behavior. You may have thought that issues with food are just about the weight and looks, but most of the time that's not the case. According to a 2018 study published in Comprehensive Psychiatry, disordered eating often goes hand in hand with self-harm. Studies suggest that this behavior shows itself as a way to control negative emotions. Do you sometimes get angry, sad, or anxious and almost mindlessly find yourself skipping a meal? You hear your stomach begging for food, but you refuse to eat to the point where you're in pain or feeling faint. If you find yourself in this situation or even have an actual eating disorder, it's likely that you're using starvation as a form of self-harm. According to National Eating Disorders Association, restrictive eating comes with a myriad of dangerous consequences for your physical and mental health. It can lead to heart disease, kidney failure, loss of red blood cells, diabetes. Your body doesn't deserve that. Number two, a risky embrace. Even what seems to be as natural as sexuality can serve as an act of self-harm. In this case, we're talking about promiscuous behavior. This might mean having frequent unprotected sex, consenting to things you don't really want to do, or exploiting yourself. A 2017 study published in Child and Adolescent Psychiatry and Mental Health examined this problem in adolescents. This is what one of the study participants said about their experience with risky sexual behavior. When I feel bad, I contact someone who wants to meet me. I feel so bad that I'll just do anything to relieve that pressure. Before the meetings, the anxiety is so strong that I barely remember how I got there and then I shut down. I let someone else take me over and decide. Afterwards, I feel disgusting and empty. Often, I'm in a lot of pain. Apart from damaging your mental health even further, this behavior takes a toll on your body too. With this behavior, you're risking sexually transmitted diseases, infections, or even unwanted pregnancy. So remember, no matter how anxious or sad you might feel, you're worthy of real, honest, and pure love, not the kind you force yourself to have. Number three, a prescription bottle. Have you ever forgotten to take a dose of medicine you were taking? Things like that happen unintentionally, but what if you decide to take more than you actually need? Intentional drug overdose, as psychologists call it, is an alarmingly common method of invisible self-harming behavior. A 2019 study on Australian teenagers found an increased number of them self-poisoning on paracetamol and other prescription drugs. Apart from analgetics, people who harm their bodies with too much medicine also tend to use anxiety or sleep medication, antipsychotics, and stimulants. But those drugs are not harmless. The same study says that paracetamol can seriously harm your liver if not taken properly. No emotional pain is worth this damage to your body. Number four, one glass too many. Do you drink alcohol often? Or do you just have a glass on special occasions? When that glass becomes one too many, it might mean you're trying to drown your pain. A 2015 research study published in Emergency Medicine Journal showed that alcohol is often used in relation to self-harm. In some cases, it's used after different self-harming methods as a way to ease the feelings of guilt and shame. But in other cases, it's an actual self-harming act. Even if you're aware of how dangerous and harmful overindulging is, you might still feel drawn to it. And even when you wake up the next day with the biggest possible headache ever, you still do it again. Dangers of excessive drinking are very well known. Liver diseases, organ failure, memory loss, and decreased motor skills are only a few from a long, long list. But this type of self-harm is not dangerous only for the one who drinks. Alcoholism destroys families and puts them through serious trauma. A 2014 research study explained that children who grow up with one or both alcoholic parents might struggle with mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, or substance abuse. Check out the resources in the description if you or someone you live struggles with abusing alcohol. And number five, 
1,000 miles per hour. Sometimes those who self-harm just want to feel something, anything. And for those with a driver's license, fast and reckless driving is a great way to feel euphoria and an adrenaline boost. But behind that wheel hides a much darker wish, a wish to harm oneself. Reckless driving is another serious self-harming method. Pressing the gas pedal or not wearing your seatbelt intentionally can mean that you secretly want something bad to happen to you. And unfortunately, that's what often happens. A heartbreaking 2009 study published in Canadian Medical Association Journal shows that 84% of self-harming young people got involved in a car crash. And just like with alcoholism, this behavior puts other lives in danger as well. Every other driver or pedestrian who happens to be near your car. What is it that makes people put their health and lives in danger by doing these things? Take a look at this video to find out. 